I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. In the last video, we did graffiti street art, and it featured an element of paint splatter. I went over it so quickly, I thought it might be a good idea to focus on it in a dedicated Inkscape tutorial, and that's what we'll do right now. I'm gonna show you an easy way to quickly make custom paint splatter using the spray can tool. It's a nice skill set to have in your arsenal, so let's do it. First thing we'll do is I'll show you how to set up a black background on your page. I'm gonna open up a new Inkscape here. Here, go to File, Document Properties, and you'll see we're going to do the format A4 for the template. But go down here on Orientation, choose Landscape, then go over to Page and make it black. If you're going to follow along, using the same size template will help you match the scale. Also, you can go up here to this magnifying glass with an empty rectangle. Click that. Inkscape will zoom to fit the whole page in your open window. If you're new to Inkscape and this is your first time trying out the spray can tool, it's this icon right here. It looks like a bottle of spray paint. But before you click on it, you have to make a selection. As an example, to demonstrate the tool, I've got this blob selected. I'll go to the spray can tool. And if you click and drag, it will shoot out that object. As a beginner, you might say, oh, spray can tool, what am I going to do with this? I'll show you up here in the control bar, there's different settings you can do to fine tune how it's going to spray out that object. Let's clean this up, control Z. Control Z just means undo. I also want to point out when you select any object, you're going to lose that control bar. To get that control bar back, click on the tool. Here I click on spray can and my controls are back. Today, let's stay on the first mode, which is spray copies of the initial selection. For width, we'll do 10. Amount, I have it at 50, and that's supposed to be the number of copies it shoots out every time you click the mouse. It's not super accurate. Rotation is going to slightly spin each copy. We have it at 50. Scale, change the size, 50. Scatter, keep it at 10. And focus for this type of paint splatter, keep it at 1. Finally, you see these two hieroglyphics, open eye and closed eye. Make sure both of them are selected. That'll be a topic for a different day. All right, let's make our first splatter, and then I'll show you how to make these custom shapes to put another splatter on top of that. I like to imagine the first drops of paint are the big ones. So we'll go to the selector tool and select the largest of our blobs. Hit the spray can tool and spray out where you imagine the paint would hit first. A shortcut for selector is S. You can hit the S key, choose the next smaller size. And a shortcut for spray can is A. Let's spray more. Let's pretend it's arcing out. You can use a reference photo or you can just imagine how gravity would shoot these around. Go back to selector. Let's get the next size down, spray can. And here I like to go around some of the bigger splotches and also take it further away, like so. S for selector, get that little baby one, spray can. This is just overspray. You can experiment, do as much as you like, as little as you like, splatter any direction you want. At this point, let's grab everything and reduce the size. I'm going to hold shift and control together, which will keep it all in the same proportion as I bring it down right about there. And let's do another layer with a slightly different blob. How do you make the blob itself? You can play around with different shapes. A simple way to do it is to create a circle, add a smaller one next to it, overlapping a touch here, make one more slightly smaller. Stick this towards the bottom. Now you have three different objects. I'm going to collect them all and go to Path Union because I want one perimeter of nodes. Here's Edit Paths by Nodes. This lets you see what you're working with here, how this is actually constructed. And to reduce the number of nodes, I'll go to Path Simplify. It's going to help with the amount of computing muscle Inkscape is going to use when you spray these out. Shift and Control to reduce its size. Before I make the smaller versions, let's change the color. Go to Object, Fill and Stroke. Pulls up your Fill and Stroke menu. Why don't we go slightly more orange and slightly darker? We'll see how that looks, and I'll show you a trick that's going to let us change all the spray at once using cloning. Right now, though, do Control D. That's going to duplicate it. Bring it over. Shrink that one down. And same with the rest. Why don't we start with this second largest. Hit the spray can tool. And the trick, if you go over one, not on the first mode, spray copies, go to the second one, spray clones. The behavior will be the same, but I want to show you the cloning feature. All the rest of the settings are the same. Width 10, amount 50, rotation 50, scale 50, scatter 10, focus 1, both of the eyes selected. Spray away. Because I sprayed clones, you can go back to the original object, and with that selected, you can change the color of all of the spray at once. Why don't we go with this red? Grab the second smallest and spray some more. 
select the baby one and do the fine spray. Maybe you want the larger one to be darker. Sometimes varying the color gives it a little bit more depth. It's getting a little messy, but it is an organic type of exercise here. Let's make a couple big splotches. Start with that dark. I'll pop in one or two at the bottom here because I'm gonna use them to make the drips. It's gonna be done with one of the unsung hero tools in my opinion, the sculpt tool. It can be found here, this wave looking icon. Up in the modification area, force, I have it set to 50. The next icon only comes into play if you're using some type of stylus that can sense pressure. And here are the modes. In previous tutorials, we've played with these first few here. Today, I wanna go to push parts of paths in any direction. Very important, under fidelity, you wanna be a high number. I've got mine set at 75. Before you can sculpt any object that is a clone, there's an extra step you have to do. You wanna grab your selection, everything that was a clone, go up to edit, clone, unlink clones recursively. It's gonna think for a second, it might even spin, but you'll know it's been unlinked if you change one of your original selections to some other color, and it doesn't affect your clones anymore. Once you're unlinked, you can then do sculpt. To prevent sculpt from warping everything, you do have to do a general selection. So now sculpt will only affect any of these objects that I have selected. Hit sculpt, click and hold, and draw down <laughs> that paint drip. When you get to the bottom, hold it again, and you can widen it out. See that? To make it look more realistic, then click and drag from the outside of your drip to make parts of it more narrow. Was this one selected? I guess it was. <laughs> two drips. When you're zoomed in, the two width might be too wide. Let's try one. <laughs> what are we making? I wasn't planning on it, but with Sculpt Tool, some of these other features will be helpful in this scenario. Let's highlight just this part down here. So I can only affect these, go back to Sculpt Tool, but let's choose this one here move objects towards cursor. So here's my little cursor. Maybe make the width 10. It's gonna suck them in. Look at that, you can move your paint wherever you want. Make it real organic. Let's do this up here. I'm still on move objects towards cursor. Let's suck them down here. You can also do the opposite. It says if you hold shift, it will push them away. So now, what should we select? Maybe something, in, let's just select all this and see what happens. We can always control Z it. I'm on Sculpt, if I hold Shift, I can push away. That's cool. Man, might have messed it up. Control Z, try it again. Just a tiny bit. So there's paint, there's paint splatter. You make your blobs, spray them out, and use the Sculpt tool to let your creativity fly. I hope this was helpful. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. Suggestions on other videos, let me know. And thanks.